What's up, what's up? It's your favorite, AKA Crystal Garner, and you are tuned into The Culture with Historically Black Sense. Hey. <laughs> And today I'm so privileged, so, so, so honored to have the lovely Mrs. Crystal Garner here with me. How are you? I can't believe you call me Mrs. You know, you really just making sure everyone knows my life. <laughs> I'm not trying to call her old people. I don't know what she's trying to insinuate at all. But nevertheless, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. And thank you for allowing us into this lovely establishment today. My life. Your life is your life. But we're going to get into that. We're going to get into it. But for the people who doesn't know anything about you. Go ahead and tell me. Um, uh, well, Crystal Garner here, one of BT's The Grand Hustle, current general manager of Trap Museum, as well as executive entertainment strategist for Grand Hustle Records. Um, overall serial entrepreneur, entrepreneur her. <laughs> I got a lot of things that are going on. They're gonna end this fourth quarter very strong. Dope, dope, dope. So, the reason that we reached out to you, um, two reasons. <laughs> One, because you are a hustle her. As you, what is it, hustle her? Did I say hustle her is right All right, she's a hustle her. <laughs> and she is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Um, so let's get into that first. <laughs> AKA. Yeah. What made you choose AKA or did AKA choose you? Uh, well, honestly, it was both. One, because I've always been a person that focused on leadership and being involved in my community. And I did that for years before I knew there were organizations that allowed you to do that on a greater scale. So when I got into college, um, I was interested in joining an organization, wasn't sure which one, and I researched all of them aside from just what, you know, everyone said the stereotypes were. And at that time, I was a business major, um, I was captain of the basketball team, and just the way I operated, everyone associated and assumed I would join certain organizations. <laughs> and um, when I decided to do more research and I seen Vivian Stringer, okay. who was the head coach of Rutgers, and she was around and had to deal with the whole comment when one of the reporters called them the nappy-headed hoes. Mm. Yeah. And the way she handled herself and the way she stood up for her women's basketball team, and I was a women's basketball player, I felt um, very fond of her, and I started to read her literature, her books, and watch her interviews, and then come to find out, she was a member of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Mm. So finding a woman that I truly looked up to outside of my immediate surroundings was something new for me. I never really idolized anyone. I've always had my foundation of God, so I never really looked at to celebrities or people that had all this clout you know, to, to motivate me. I looked at people around me, and most of the people around me were di part of different organizations. So seeing her, reading her story, and becoming fond of her was the, the push that I needed to be interested in AKA, which was also the organization that wasn't on my yard. So mm. I had an opportunity to help bring it back to the campus. Oh, dope. To be that resurrection line. And 10 years later, yeah. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> 10 years, okay. I love my chapter. My chapter, we are very aggressive chapter of AKAs. Okay. We're not the stereotypical uh, chapter of our org. Um, we're a New York-based chapter, which is another thing that I'm learning. There's a huge difference coming down to Atlanta and just seeing how people operate and move and shake. So yeah, very, very happy to be part of a sisterhood and have um, women around me that honestly tell me the truth about myself. You know, it's not the sugar coat. I mean, we, I like to call my chapter the dead ass case, you know, because <laughs> we just, it's, we're so New York and we're so honest and real with each other. It's not sugar coated. We can't like, oh, it's not the, hey, sore, maybe should. It's like, yo, sex, what are you doing? No, you need to, you know, it's very, very, really direct. And I'm grateful for that because sometimes you need that harsh, honest truth. Definitely, definitely. So. You said it's kind of an uh, aggressive chapter. Um, <laughs> and maybe that's, maybe that's what I get from your personality or something. Um, I did tell her I thought she was stuck up people. I will go ahead and admit that. 
But and why um, did you think I was stuck? It's the New York. Most people that I know, <laughs> most people that I know from up north, they may not be so stuck up, but they don't open up right away. They don't come in. They don't laugh. They don't do any of that. So I laugh. Uh, you laugh. <laughs> well, she was on the show laughing sometimes, but yeah, I was very that, serious. That's, yeah, it was sometimes, but that's a totally different story. But so, if you had a chance to to win six figure salary, would you be laughing all the time, or would you be serious? I would not, because the people who were laughing, they got. Right on out the door. Um, <laughs> don't say it to anybody. Uh, <laughs> just from what I saw. I'm you know, just saying. From what I saw. Just people, from what that I were, saw. people that were there to be on a show got what they got out of it being on the show. Yeah. And people that were there that wanted to get business connections or opportunities out of it got that out of it. And for me, my overall goal was if I'm going to quit this comfortable position to be uncomfortable to possibly win a position that I think I would be great at, yeah. then I'm going to be serious. And one thing I always tell people, one thing I do regret is that they did edit out a lot of my fun moments. So people didn't get to see, see. how silly I am. See. Like the fact that I was, uh, Gracie told me how to do a handstand and I was like falling. Or the fact that every night I cooked for the whole cast. Like I just cooked so we would have dinner together. Or the fact that we created a random unity show. Like we had so many fun moments when we were in the house, but because it had to be 48 hours cut down into a 45 minute episode, it was two days cut down into 45 minutes. They didn't show any of our stuff in the house. We were 24 hour surveillance and we had a lot of fun. Once I was done with my work, I, 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 you had fun. I had fun. I, 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 you, you had fun. But it's no fun. You cook for the whole house? I did. I used to cook. I used to make them some collard greens, salmon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You from Mom North? You sure? Yeah. See, let me tell y'all something, all right? <clears throat> this color of my skin. <laughs> you know, my family and, and my family's always taught. You're good. Okay, I just want to make sure I can cut back into oh, yeah. it without the beat. Um, so, for me, my family's always taught cooking. And New York is very expensive to go out and eat, to, and to eat every night, right? So my mom's cooked, my grandma cooked, and my nana cooked. Everybody always cooked. And understand that my ancestors are from the South. I have family from Maryland. I have family from Alabama. My nana was born and raised in Alabama. They moved. She did um, the Air Force Division to Brooklyn and had my dad. So okay. I always had those teachings within us. And what I love is that they taught it down. Like my mom taught me how to cook. So yes, so sister she does, cook. She, she does know I'm from up north, and I can cook. <laughs> Period, pool, all that. <laughs> I guess what I'm gonna have to do is go DM each individual that was on that show, and, be like, hey, really cool. and we're gonna see how many um, how many different answers I get, and I'm gonna make sure I DM them to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, screenshot, send screenshot, that, screenshot. and I bet you they're gonna say, it. and if they don't say I was cooking, that means they was just hating. They was hating. They was hating. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, you started out doing radio. Yeah. <laughs> how did that come about? Um, and how long did you do it for? For a couple of years. Um, so I, technically, I really started out doing modeling and acting. Okay. And I started modeling. People would always say, oh my gosh, you have a great personality. You should be into acting. And I was like, I can't memorize scripts. So, <laughs> no. But doing modeling, I got into commercials. And a lot of directors were pushing me towards acting. And they were like, wait a minute, you have a dope personality. And you speak up on things. You ever thought of doing radio? And I was like, eh, you know, I'm not sure about that. But I got presented an opportunity to do a podcast before podcasting became a thing. Oh, no, dope. Yeah, no. so ahead of the curve, my podcast, the Golden Podcast, we were the first visual podcast. Like, people weren't doing the visual portion of it. They were just doing the audio. So we did both. The podcasts were podcasts. When it was just podcasts, now it's like, <laughs> if you don't have a visual to your podcast, it's like, nobody's really checking for you that much anymore these days. So we did that for about two and a half years. And me doing the podcast and being consistent with the content and having content on iTunes that people could go to and having it on SoundCloud um, presented me with the opportunity to be on 103.9 FM, which was Tom during the mornings and DL Weekly Afternoons. And I was on the Saturday show. I had my own segment in Amani KG where I talked about the most outlandish things like, <laughs> you know, uh, arranged marriages or sapiosexuals. Like, I talked about so many different things, but that came from me just creating my own product. And I think that's what we need to realize as a culture, and that's what you guys are doing right now, is that stop sitting around and waiting for somebody to present the opportunity to you. Create. If you have an idea, you have people in your network, network across, come together, 
and get it done. Stop waiting for that big audition or that big opportunity. And that's what happened. I just was creating content and they needed a female host that was, you know, a little off the wall. Off the wall. <laughs> and they called your girl. Off the wall, people. <laughs> I don't even know if Adrena's gonna put the first part that she said in, but she <laughs> says that she's very faithful. So she, I can imagine some of the things that she talks about because this has <laughs> nothing to do with the relationships at all, but she says something about being faithful on this. So I can imagine what you would say on the podcast or what may slip out during your podcast that I'm you're doing. I'm very open and honest. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Pause. Pause. That uh, came out wrong. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you got the little southern boy over here blushing. Nah, 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 <laughs> nah, nah. I'm good. But yeah. um, <laughs> so transitioning from radio. Okay. The opportunity arises to do the grand hustle. When were you presented this opportunity? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when did it come across your desk, so to speak, or? Or who brought it to you and what made you want to go ahead and, you know, just dive in and take a chance at it? Well, at that time I was doing radio and auditioning still for stuff. I submitted for it. Um, I got called back immediately, did a Skype, and it was supposed to be on a different network. No problem. Yeah, and then they tabled it. They was like, we're no longer doing it. Like, as I was about to fly out to Atlanta, they was about to fly me out, tabled it. Um, so I got the audition from, I, I was subscribed to basically every audition site. So. Oh. I got the audition, I grabbed it, and I was like, ah, I've always said if I were to do a reality show, it would be similar to I would work for Diddy. And voila, this, this audition pops up. So I'm like, <laughs> it was so many pages, and I'm like typing away. I don't even like to write that intense. I'm in here going in, and it's supposed to be like a paragraph. I'm writing like pages, like why I should be on the show. <laughs> I mean, why I'm going to win and all this stuff. So fast forward to it not happening to me getting a job as a liquor rep, and I absolutely love the flexibility because I was able to still audition, I mean my own schedule, but I had a corporate position and I had benefits. Mm. <laughs> that was the awesome. main thing. One of, <laughs> one of the main things anyway, people benefits makes you drive them Exactly. At least I was try to get them. Try to get them, but I was hyped. I was like, wow, you know, as an entertainer, I have health benefits and 401k and all this stuff, and I had a consistent check. So um, I got comfortable, but I promised God that if anything came my way that was towards my dreams and my passions, that I would get up and quit. Mm. Now, this is my credit score is going up. Sis is filling herself. You know, wardrobe is on fleek. <laughs> I don't think they use that word anymore, but I'm going to just say it. Uh, <laughs> she's old, people. She's old. She's, she's old. Season. Season. And then I got the call again. And they said, BET picked up the show. We really want you. We're gonna audition a few more people, but you don't have to audition again if you're interested. Um, we'll let you give you details in about two to two, two to four weeks. And I was like, okay, so I had two to four weeks to really decide if I was gonna mm. quit my job. At least they gave you two to four weeks though, because sometimes uh, it kind of went quicker than that. But it went quicker than two <laughs> they said two to four weeks, and then I had um, they called me maybe like a couple of days later and said, <laughs> we're gonna fly you out on this date, and we need you for uh, up to two months if you you know make it. Yeah. And I was like, oh crap. So then I had to put on my two weeks, like the next, that Monday, that next week. And I wanted to talk to my boss. And I'm like, well, since I'm number one in New York, top 10 in the country, they'll give me a leave of absence. You know, just <laughs> do something real quick. I can come back. They said no. And they thought I wouldn't quit mm. because I was doing so well. And I was on a path to be one of the top executives in said company. And I was like, ooh. Decisions. But... That's not what I wasn't my passion. I'm an entertainer. Plus, they weren't probably gonna pay me what I deserve to be paid, especially mm -hmm. as a black female in that industry. Um, I would have had to really fight to get what I deserved. And I was like, hmm, do I want to do this or do I want to be in entertainment, which is what I love? And I took the risk. I quit. And I cried at the I cried when I quit. I cried at the airport when I didn't have <laughs> enough money for my luggage. And I was like, at the, I really wish they filmed me. Like I'm throwing stuff out into my sister's car out of my luggage because I was overweight. I was like, I don't have enough money. <laughs> you had a reality show within itself. Yeah. I was like, we should have recorded this, but I had to catch my plane so we couldn't. My sister tried to help me leave stuff behind. And I hopped on the plane and I get on the line and my sister calls me while I'm in security. She said, what's a couple hundred dollars for someone that's about to make six figures? And I was like, that's when I knew I wanted. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, it's kind of hard to have a shot at uh, six figures and just like, 
not jump in and yeah. try to go get it. I, I think, well, clearly you made the right decision. I yeah. think you made the right decision. Clearly you made the right decision. Hello, we're here. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure I still would have heard of you. So, I mean, you know, she's been doing this. She just ran out a whole, a whole spill of what she's been doing. Um, <laughs> I did just spill it right. <laughs> so, I, I look on your page. Um, I did see, you know, the thing about the radio. Um, your podcast and radio host and being a radio personality. So, you are the general manager of the Trout Music Museum. How do you like it? And you gotta say it. <laughs> she, she, she can only answer this one way anyway. <laughs> um, uh, love it. Sis is out the projects in New York and into a nice spot in Midtown Atlanta. Um, I have the opportunity to give creatives a chance to showcase their work to about 6,000 people per weekend. A lot of the artists that are in here now um, not everyone is no known, you know, like a uh, top artist. These are people that DM us on Instagram, that right. email submissions. Some are friends of mine, some of my summaries of our, our women's exhibit that we're not done with, but we will be presenting soon. The Nick, one of the Nicky, one of the Cardi pieces from one of my summaries, Ryan from DC, that I had written, met, and connected with. And also, she was an amazing artist. Uh, any t opportunity I have a chance to put someone on, if we're looking for something, I try to go across my network. Okay, look at that. <laughs> when y'all see this interview, don't DM me asking me, can y'all put some art in the trap in the uh, Trap Music Museum, all right? Submissions <laughs> at trapmusicmuseum.us, and then my amazing art manager will go through it and present to the team. That's how you do it. There but if you you're my friend, you know, there, there I'm gonna you go. be like. Well, I, you gotta worry about that. <laughs> I can't even draw a straight line, so. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, worry about me at all. Um, so, the, I did her NAACP. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that, because it seems, you know, for me, even going on the page, it seems so inspiring. It seems oh, yeah, very yeah. inspiring. Um, when I see the youth, and when I see, it's, it's, it looks like a lot of women empowerment going on. It is, and there's so much of that going on right now in our world. And I've said this since the top of 2019. This year is this, the year of the woman. Um, we are out here moving and shaking and winning. The thing is, as we are the fastest group of entrepreneurs, we also quit very fast, and we quit very fast because we don't have access to resources, venture, venture capitalists. We don't have access to opportunities. We don't have access, um, access to training. Um, we are basically coming up with great ideas but don't have or don't know how to get the structure to sustain and that sucks because we are the fastest growing group that doesn't make any sense to me so what i love about NAACP and decided to take it a step fur further with the economics department and create her idea and the purpose of her idea is to go around and teach women Young women, women that are older and seasoned decided to get back and create their own hustle, how to legitimize their business, what resources are available to them in whatever area they're in. Um, the opportunity to listen to women that are entrepreneurs and have sustained and that are growing. And we've had the chance to present them with women that are actually women of color that are venture capitalists, which mm. there isn't that many. It really, if I could count, it wouldn't be <laughs> that many fingers used. So bring in the opportunities and meeting them where they're at so they can learn and be successful. And we also launched the podcast. So if you're not able to get to wherever we're at, right now we're on our HBCU tour, but if you're not able to get where we're at, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes and hear all the jewels and the gems that we get from these amazing women that come and speak on the panels or do a keynote and me being silly and keeping it a whole vibe. So I host everything with it. Um, and I was more something I really wanted to do. I can sit on a panel, but it means so much more to me when I'm able to navigate through the conversation and make it make sense for people that are in the room. So much more intimate. It is for So me. much more intimate. <laughs> and I think that's a great thing. We actually, we posted on our page um, when you attended Benedict College. Oh. Where, um, so we will continue to post, you know, as long as anything that you have going on as far as, you know, <clears throat> That great, great concept and great women empowerment, in, in empowerment, I'm sorry, <laughs> empowerment, um, whole vibe that you got going. Um, so, being an AKA, you know, you, you wear all of these hats. How, <laughs> how has that played a part in you doing so much and in your life right now? 
Ooh, there's so many things I want and to I say. And I got one thing in mind, but I'm going to see if you're going to say it. <laughs> um, there's one thing I will say, but there's something that definitely helped me be able to be successful in life as part of being an AKA. That's one thing. Okay. But the other things are... Um, life in the process. <laughs> okay, let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> um. Ten years of K. Ten years of K. Um, but other than that, just and it's not just AKA, but the whole divine mind in general. Okay. My network is ridiculous, and people believe in me, and I believe in people. So we're always building and working together. I think that's amazing. My school, SUNY Old Westbury in New York, we were the only school in New York to have all Divine Nine there mm. on campus, active, doing stuff. And that's not something you see at a PWI, but my on campus uh, scenario, we were 90% um, African Americans and minority on campus. Oh, wow. It's just our commuters were more, you know, everyone else. So, <laughs> so we're PWI, but we were. On HBCU uh, You know, I, I say that people get <laughs> mad at me. I get it. I understand because of the years. And we also have um, Calvin Butts, Reverend Calvin Butts, who is our president. He's black. Okay. So with my school, oh Westbury, we collapsed so much that in our later years, I look at everyone excelling and doing things, and it's because we all naturally collapsed. And when Issa Rae said it out loud, that networking across, I'm for everyone black. That was something that's already been embodied in me because of the Greek life that I had on campus and how we support and work with each other. Fast forward to today, like people are just doing phenomenal things. Like Juicy Palooza is huge, as people from the West. Like it's just so many people that we went to school with that are killing the game. No we are manifesting right now. We're all in our 30s and we're doing some. 30s? Dang, I thought you were like 45 or something. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, this is a great thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm 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 playing. I don't black, don't crack. Okay, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Don't what say was that. the thing you was gonna say though? Did I say it? No, nah, most people say discipline all the time. They just like, yeah, oh, that's like okay. it made me so disciplined. I guess that's a good way to say what I want to say without saying. Yeah, because I knew what you were gonna say, but I kind of, I kind of put that word in what I said. Yeah, so um, definitely yeah. the discipline. Let's go. So real quick. We gonna um, uh -oh. no 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 it's that it's people every time I do this people are like what you think I'm gonna pull out here like I don't know we in Atlanta definitely <laughs> <laughs> New York is worse no see y'all got a good carrier uh -huh. oh well yeah <laughs> I got four questions here oh gosh so we're gonna pick two out of the four but pick one first um whatever number you wanna pick one two three four just touch it and I'm gonna read it and um we're gonna see what you got did it yep yep all right let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. <laughs> now I almost had a joke, but I'm not gonna do it. Alright. It says, do you prefer to attend probates or step shows? Hmm. I prefer to attend probates in New York. And <laughs> I'm cool if I'm in if I'm not in New York, then I'm gonna attend a step show that probate. Good answer because they are totally different. They are totally different. They'd be flying obbies and all that. I'd be confused. They are totally different. <laughs> totally shape, people. Shape, 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 but you know. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna pick one more. Let's see. Question one. Wait, this is not this ain't bad at all. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite memory as an AKA thus far? My favorite memory. Hmm. Wow. That's intense. I don't even know what's my favorite memory. Mm. Okay. Had to make you think. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what is my favorite memory? I would say my favorite memory is the coming out show. Okay. That's a nice way to say it, right? <laughs> of my neos, you know. I'm not gonna say what you know what I was to them, but of my kids, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, they're they're pro me. Okay. Um, it was, it was a proud mom moment, and they're so dope in life. So I'm just grateful that I was a part of selecting these women to be a part of my chapter and my organization, and then 
you know, nurtured them into this sisterhood of AKA, and they just made us look so amazing with their probate. And if viral was a thing at that time, we would have went viral. But I didn't let anybody record. And this, oh, <laughs> you, oh man, I'm well, <laughs> scared of. For lack of better word. <laughs> so scared. She didn't want nobody to see it in, no. case, in case anything <laughs> went wrong. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, this stuff. But look, like. It's like now. That's how I know she's like 45. Like now everybody has phones and stuff. You can't stop them from one. So no, that, I did not. The amount of cameras that was around in her time kind of lets y'all know that. Uh. They were, oh my God, I crossed in 2009. My baby's in 2010. It's not oh, that long ago. No. What did you cross no. yesterday? Nah, I didn't. I, cro I crossed in uh, fall of 2011. Yeah. Y'all fall 11, so. Yeah, yeah, because I got the Civil Act. I knew you was gonna throw a joke in there. Yeah, I had to, because you coming for me. You call me 45. Oh, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Comment below if you with my age, if you can guess it. <laughs> and I'm not 45. I'm in my 30s. Not believe that. Not believe that. <laughs> so um, you know, definitely anything else that you really, really want to tell people and want people to know about you, anything that you have coming up, um, please go ahead and tell them. Because you seem to be a very interesting person, and I'm sure a lot of people they want to know more. It's a lot of women who are striving to be in the position that you are. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are waiting on you and the creator of this to um, bump heads so they can fly. That won't happen. That won't. But yeah, so. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all that. So yeah, definitely. Um, go ahead and just tell the people. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. 2020 is gonna be huge for the brand of Crystal Garner and Garner Enterprises LLC. Two things will be, one will be my first book. Um, mm. I'm almost done with one, and I'm pretty much the second one. My coffee table book is pretty much done, but the first one, I want to drop that one first. Survival Guide of Hustler. Um, so that's one thing, and then on top of that more opportunities to talk to women in a less, I don't wanna say strenuous environment, but more of a intimate environment. So doing webinars um, and different, just different unique ways to reach women instead of the mundane panel that's going on right now. And I don't have an issue with it. I just wanna do something different and unique. and hit a different nerve for people mm, as far it. as going after your goals and setting smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, tangible, and setting out your year the correct way so that you can actually achieve your dreams. And, you know, I just don't want to be another person that just say, hey, you can do it. I want to teach you how to do it, you know? So gotcha. 2020 is going to be that year of teaching people how to go out and get it. That's dope, that's dope. We're definitely to be on the lookout for it too. Definitely. Um, and she is over this establishment. Oh, there'll be a lot of things going on here. So I'm pretty sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this was supposed to be temporary. It was right? supposed to be a pop up, and people wanted it to stay, so it's yeah. here, and we're going to continue to evolve it, grow the brand, continue to travel with it. We have the little trap house that's traveling. Okay. So, yeah, you'll see a lot more from this. That's one thing I will make sure happens, whatever happens with me and you know, my contract technically was for a year, so we'll see what happens. But I'm just joking, they love me. <laughs> They'll extend it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, she's, oh she's, she's getting ready for retirement real soon anyway, so. Whose man's is this? But, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's why I never dated a Sigma. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just joking. My uncle's actually a charter member. Uh, from my yard. Oh, really? Sigma. Yes. Oh, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. That's definitely dope. See? Uh, this, I know you had good people in you. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> But um, no, no, <laughs> on a serious note, we definitely appreciate you for, you know, taking the time out of your busy schedule no to um, sit down with us and share some insight and of course. even in life with people. Hopefully, so, um, yeah. I got something, you know, out of this. Definitely, definitely. Well, anytime that you want to come have a seat up here, historically black sense, <laughs> you look at that firm handshake she's giving you over It's all business with her. Trying to teach him some things. I know, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, we definitely appreciate it. Um, Everybody, you have been tuned in to another episode of Historically Black Sense the Culture. We out of here. It's Krista Garner. Thank you again. What was that? <laughs>